Hi and welcome everybody. Welcome to the channel uh, and particularly to this series of videos that is going to enable you to get much more realistic and lush sounding and expressive sounding recordings of symphony orchestras. The first instrument we're going to work with today is the cello. So our job is to take each instrument of this orchestra and be, becoming able to express pretty much the way the natural players express themselves on the instrument. And the tricky part is that means we have to know the plugin really well. So let's see what it's capable of. So here we're looking at the SWAM cello. SWAM is just a description of the technology used, how they meld the sound and the samples together and what their synthesizer engine under the hood is doing. Uh, this is from a company called Audio Modeling and it's one of my favorites. Uh, let's just take a look what it's capable of. Here we go. You're gonna actually see at the bottom, I'm making a separate Recording, that's my volume pedal over there, and it's creating controller 11. Uh, and this needs controller 11 for expression control, so let's see what it does. Take a look at this window real quick. This is where you can actually see which controllers are being used and you'll see how many controllers you need to be able to move and operate fluidly at the same time. So you can see it's extremely expressive. First of all, it's got true legato. Let's look at how true legato works. If I play this key, and let's begin with F, and as I press down the F on the keyboard, I'm gonna go over and press the A flat very slowly. Now I'm gonna play it a little faster. So it is the velocity of the following note after the initial note that determines as to how fast this uh, glissando or portamento actually occurs. Take a look. That was a fast legato from F to D. Now let's do it slow. By the way, you, you'll notice that I will never you put a vibrato on the lowest strings because it's physically impossible for a cello to have a vibrato there. Half step up, you can have a vibrato. So one of the most important things that I know about the cello is that most cello players will impart a lot of um, crescendos in their playing. So they will play bah, 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 very classical sounding and beautiful, expressive, elegiac way of sculpting a note. Of course, that's possible with a sustain with the uh, with the volume pedal. <laughs> So this particular instrument is really, really gorgeously laid out. There's tons of options how to change the timbre, the vibrato speed, and so forth. Even the core tone of it is changeable. But this is not the point of this video. The point of this video is that I wanted to share with you that it's really important to get each instrument to speak as expressively as you possibly can. And if it requires a breath controller or a volume paddle, or the modulation controls over here, all that's fine. I frequently sometimes even use uh, the pitch bender. The way
way this particular plugin is laid out, it's laid out in a way that the pitch bending does not sound like it goes to chipmunk, so it changes from uh, it doesn't do that, you know, it doesn't change its overtone structure. <laughs> What I really like about this plugin also is that it has a release effect which is very realistic to the uh, natural instrument. I want to talk quickly also about how to orchestrate for cello. When you use cello, just don't use it only as a sub substitute for a bass note. The cello works beautiful when it's consonant like that. For example, you play like uh, uh, F, C, G with a guitar and you put this on top that's nice but the cello works so much nicer when you let it speak in more dissonant notes or chord tones for example if you lay that over the same chord progression then there's a lot more emotion coming out of course the arrangement has to work with the vocal or whatever your lead instrument is uh, if it's a solo position or if it's a place where there's a solo and the instrument can just you know take a cadence play a cadence then of course you know there's no limits to what you can do so that's what I wanted to show you this cello is extremely expressive they also have uh, in that same series a violin and a viola so with those three instruments together I can make very believable chamber orchestra uh, simulations or emulations which um, a lot of those you can actually hear on projects that are already released. One of them is uh, the song Misty uh, that I released with uh, artist Jason Gould, one of my longtime clients and friends. Uh, if you look it up on YouTube, we're, I'm going to post a link uh, right below, clickable in the description where you can hear this. And the other thing I also want to just make you aware of, one of the greatest drawbacks of all of these virtual instruments with all their expressive capability is that they play so incredibly perfectly in tune, no orchestra on the planet would ever sound like that. So it is actually conceivably worth to go into a recording after the fact, once you laid your pass down of a cello pass and then slightly use the, pitching, the pitch wheel here. throw things a little out of pitch. Not that, that was a little extreme, but I would deliberately take a very small percentage of detuning that I would randomly apply. The problem is if you set the plugin to just randomize that, then it will become unpredictable. You know, I rather have a control over where the plugin goes out of tune because there's actually a book written about it by John Sebastian Bach called the, uh, the Teachings of the Effect with A. And that talks about how Bach likes to utilize certain instruments away from the, from the perfectly correct pitch center. For example, to ask the instrumentalist to go deliberately sharp can induce a, an emotion of exuberance and joyfulness, whereas delay something into the flat pocket of the pitch. So just below the ideal center of the pitch can induce like a somber, darker, and moodier tone. And those things were deliberately used in orchestration because the magic is not always at the center of the pitch. You know, and that's true too also if for lead vocals. You know, what's coming out of in pop music nowadays, where they apply autotune, which rigorously pins everything to the pitch center, that's not always where the magic is. Quite the contrary, you might be erasing a lot of magic. And the same is true for string orchestras here, and any instrument, as a matter of fact. That's all about the cello. Next video, I will talk about the viola and the violin, as well as some of the horn instruments, like uh, oboe, French horn, uh, English horn, bassoon, and so forth because several of the companies now are so advanced in this technology, 
we should use all this stuff in our orchestration. It really helps it. It's a beautiful thing. I'm going to post a couple of links of uh, orchestrations that I've done where these plugins were used in the description. Uh, please subscribe to this channel. It encourages me and my team here to release more and more videos with that content. There will be a lot of them dealing with string orchestration basics and then also advanced techniques all the way to the full uh, orchestrations. That's all for now. Signing out from the Creation Station. Take good care and stay creative.